Hey everybody, welcome friends, I am Oliver Joyce, welcome to Beta Day, it's Beta Launch Day. So sometime tonight I'm going to be throwing out Swords and Sandals Crusader Redux to a handful of uh, testers, the same testers for the most part who tested previous Swords and Sandals games, uh, people who I trust and you know really know and love the games. So they're going to be testing the game for about a week and then I'm going to look forward to and you know kind of brace myself for their feedback. And then in the um, week and a half after that, I'm going to be doing bug fixes and balancing based on what they have to say. Uh, this is a bit of a quick video because I've got a really full day ahead of me today just to get through my list of bug fixes. Not all of it is going to um, go in there for the beta. There's still some things that I need to sort out. Um, I've got about 25 things on my to-do list and some of that will be post-launch in terms of features mainly. Uh, there's a few bugs that I'm aware of in the game, and we're going to play the game now, and you might even find a couple of them. Um, that's not all going to be fixed for the beta. That's all right. That doesn't matter. The beta is all about um, you know, giving people a taste of what the game is about. It shows the first campaign, uh, first chapter, and the second chapter of the game, and I think maybe the Conquer the Realm mode and locks off the other two game modes. I'm kind of nervous and excited because this is, other than my wife, uh, nobody's played the game. So it'll be interesting to see what you all think of Swords of Sandals Crusader Redux. I'm really looking forward to getting this one out and in the public because um, I loved the original Crusader and um, I'm, I've had a good time remaking it. But I'm also ready to move on. It's been a very trying year for all of us and um, this has been a very, you know, a uh, stop-start development. Um, I'm happy with how it's turned out, but... Um, I just can't wait to get the Sword and Sandal 6. So um, without further ado, let's play a little bit more of Sword and Sandal's Crusader Redux beta version. All right. Welcome to Sword All right, Sandal welcome. Crusader. As he says, welcome to Sword and Sandal's Crusader Redux beta version 0.0.95, which is the beta that I'll be sending out in the next 24 hours. Uh, I'm on the webcam right now, but I'm going to um, turn that off just so you can see more of the game uh, as much as you enjoy or don't enjoy seeing my face. Probably best to hide it for this bit. All right. Let's load a campaign. We have Wolfgang's campaign over there, which is what I'm testing at the moment, Chapter 3, Mission 4. But today we're going to load up Chapter 1, Mission 5, which is the end of Lionel's campaign. Colossus of the Desert. Your priests have made contact with the Archangel Sandolphin, who has agreed to join the Kingdom cause. And not a moment too soon, for it seems Arglax and the Beast Force are massing in great numbers. Rumor spreads about a mighty colossal ape, some 70 feet high. Arglax, it is well known, was an ally of the foreman, fallen Emperor Antares. You must defeat his campaign army and find out why he is causing so much trouble in the south. Also beware of the troubles in Sons of Frost. While you don't need to defeat them, they may still be a threat. Build a catapult to destroy the Beast Force stronghold at Taj Brandir. Uh, I thought about doing a full voiceover for the game, but I um, sort of mumble and jumble my words so much it would just be uh, ridiculous. Plus, there's a lot of text in the game. Let's start the mission. Welcome. Bruce. So, in this mission, we have allies in the form of um, so Belgrave and myself, and of course, Boars and Arglax are against us. You can also see I've added some rollovers now. So when you move over a province, it has a little white highlight just to just for your convenience. I think it looks kind of cool, so you know you know where your mouse is. And of course, when you click on a province, you can get some information about it, whether it's improved, how much gold it's bringing in, or something. One thing I want you to look at right here is um, see how the provinces have names on them. Um, that's an addition that I added the other day, and I put a vote to Twitter and. People loved it. It was four to one. People wanted it as the default. So you can turn it off if you want in the settings mode. You can go map names on or off. Off it looks a lot less cluttered and you can kind of see province lines and so on. But if you want to know where you are on the map, that's a useful thing to have. Of course, you can change the map from classic map, original Crusader style back to Redux or change the icons from the hero to the little um, round circles or the steeds, which are actually the horses and so on. They kind of blocked off by this menu but let's actually change it to the portraits for now I find that the that will be the default I want this game to be customizable so you can have it as close to the original Crusader experience as you wish or as different of course last week I added in the view land 
and you can see now um, I've improved it a little bit to make it a bit nicer. Fator is an improved province and you can see um, a bit of flavor text about it. it tells you why it's improved and it actually brings in 28 gold per turn which is uh, twice normal. That's the most uh, valuable province in the whole game and well worth owning. Uh, an unimproved province like Summerton will have this down here. Let's claim that. And we're going to try and improve that. View land. Um, I put this flavor text in here like, Summerton sure is sleepy. You know what would make, wake things up? An arena. You should build a small arena right here in the heart of the province and get some low-level gladiators to stage some fights. As even Antares knows, owning an arena would certainly be profitable. So 40 gold to improve and it will go from 4 to 8. And then you get a little bit of text to tell you what happened when you improved it. After the construction of a modest arena, a small but steady stream of gladiators make their way to the sleepy province. Most are lacking in skill and polish, but one, a young Phelan McMaster, delights and wows the crowd so much that your treasury sees serious gold incoming. For every single province, I've added that. So that's kind of something fun for fans of the game who enjoy the lore and want to know a bit, bit more about each province. So... Um, you can, of course, garrison your lands and so on. We're not going to garrison things right now because I want my whole army to come on the campaign. We need 250 gold my army. to get a catapult, 256 gold, and we can upgrade it, which will make it more powerful if we wish. We have a Colossus too, Sandalf and the Archangel. Um, you can't upgrade him and he's already summoned. That's his stats there. You can see he's a lot more powerful than a regular... Uh, troop, but he still can be defeated. Let's move south. I'm going to improve that province. Archmagius. Get some extra gold um, before I lay siege to the castle. Arglax is up there just milling about. He probably suspects something is up. Ah, a tournament! Invitation to the tournament. A scout arrives at your camp with a wax-sealed envelope. You open it. All lords of the realm are hereby invited to compete in the tournament at Sharpsdale. This will be a day of feasting, jousting, single combat, and archery as the greatest lords in Brandor put aside grievances to compete in sport for fame, land, and gold. What say you, Crusader? Will you take part? Yeah, why not? Great chance to make some money. The tournament has begun. So, I showed off the tournament in an earlier video, but um, I just want to show you now... Um, wow, we've got seven knights competing, um, seven lords. Even lords that aren't part of the campaign mission um, can compete in this. So we've got, obviously, um, guys like Sel and Helmgard and He Chaos and so on. We can compete for land if we wish, and then any free lands will go to the winner or the second place. So let's compete for land. Okay, begin tournament. Originally, I had it so you would lose your own land if you... Um, didn't win but that got too complicated to explain so cliff diving let's do that first cliff diving is quite simple and it's something that um, I got a few ideas about how to make, make a bit more intricate and complicated but that will come in a future patch for now all you gotta do is try and get the perfect dive head first into the water like this the faster your dive the more points you can go let's go with a backward roll if I hit the mouse well Hey, that's a good dive. We're going to take that. You've got two more dives if you don't want to take that, but I'm happy with that result. So now we can um, Noble Deeds, which is just a fun little, you know, basically a, a choose your own adventure. We're coming third place. Chivalric Noble Deed for the common people. We can escort the elderly, do some gardening, prepare for the feast, or work at the barbers. There's a hundred of these, more. There's heaps. Um, let's escort the elderly. Ah. You usher some elderly folk into the church in time for Mass, but then realize Mass isn't on until Sunday, leaving a herd of confused patrons staring at you. That's no good. We only had two points from that, so we're dropped down to fifth. I'm going to try and make it up in the joust. You can also simulate these events if you just you know want to get through it quickly. Here's our friend Lionel. We're going to aim... If you played Medieval, the jousting is... Very similar to that. Basically, it is that. You want to try and tap. Two circles will appear. They shrink down. You want to try and tap when they touch. Oh, I missed it. Ooh. Took some damage. 
the more points you go for, the faster those circles move. But we have to get it to get more points. There we go. Ooh. Tired. Taking a beating. I really need to win this one. Here we go. Oh. We win 6-4. So we got 6 points out of that. And Baron Wolfgang only got 4. So that's kind of good. And the last event, of course, is combat, which you may have seen from Swords and Sandals Pirates. It's like a very simplified version of the Swords and Sandals Gladiator combat. Slash, these are the, the rules, basically. Ah, oh, we're fighting against Selen Helmguard. So let's try and um, cut him. Cutting him pushes him back further, Slash does more damage. He's got 9 health, we have 10. We'll try and knock him into the pit. You can also heal, only twice, but you can also vault over them if you feel like you're too close to the edge. Oh, I need to um, fix up the edge of that too. Always something. Yes, we defeated him. And you get points depending on how much health you have left. And we got nine points out of that because we had nine health. So that is awesome. Meaning we won the tournament. The tournament is over. King Lionel gains control over the lands of Hallenfall and Clerg. Two random lands. Awesome. He Chaos, who is the runner-up, takes the bad lands. Which is fitting because that's right near Edengarth. Return to war. Ah, oh, yeah, and then our little um, army was defeated in an order battle. Okay. So we got some gold. We need a little bit more to get our catapult. By a catapult. You can also upgrade the boulders to do more damage if you want. End up throwing things like cows and, you know, green slime and that kind of stuff, just like the original Crusader. Let's try digging. Oh, nice. 159 gold. That was good luck. Get ourselves some bowmen. I think bowmen are good to have. Let's upgrade them as well. Improve their stats. We'll get a couple of champions as well. Champions are good because they can ram the walls in sieges. I think we should try and strike while well, his campaign army is down there. I think we should get... Alright, let's attack the castle. Our army stands before the Beast Force's stronghold. We have placed them in the castle under siege. If we defeat them today, their campaign is over. Of course, you can seek council. 51% chance of victory. We get a morale bonus for doing that. The uh, little fat kid, of course, our advisor. Would you take his advice? I don't know. I don't know if I would. All right. Uh, you may have noticed a slight uh, weird jump there, but um, the uh, game actually bugged out as I was loading the siege, so I had to recreate all those steps and bring it back to this, so our army size will be a little bit different than what I had um, before that little hiccup. But here we are at the siege of Taj Brandir. Arglex is not here because his campaign army is on the move. Uh, we have the Brandiri garrison here who are a little under strength. Only a level 1 garrison. So the strength of the castle walls is directly correlated to the level of your the character there. Um, the stronger the um, crusader, the more powerful the walls. So here we have all our options. We have our Crusader, uh, our Colossus here. We have our Crusader powers we can use. Um, we can also use our Catapult. I'm going to show you just firing the Catapult first. You can fire at one of three towers, each with a Catapult. The left and right ones, if you destroy them, you get bonus gold. You want to take down the main wall so you can get into their castle and hit the siege as fast as you can normally. But for now, I'm going to show you hitting the far tower. We're going to do a low arc which is a higher chance of damage. Okay, so I'm going to try hitting it again. High up. 50-50 chance. Knocked it down. And we get some gold out of that. So, let's use our Colossus now. And they can actually smash the walls. See how they did big damage up there. But once you do that, they will start targeting your Colossus as well. And he can die before the siege even reaches its melee phase. 
If you have heavy troops, you can ram the castle. We've only got uh, a few heavy troops, so let's try it just for fun. Just the one. He's tried to ram the castle. To no avail. That's a bug. He should be further along. Gotta fix that. Uh, you can also scale the walls as well, but I think our best chance of taking this down... We can use our powers if we want. We can use the iron gauntlets to ram the walls. As you improve the iron gauntlets power, they will actually do more damage as well. You can actually rip down walls with them with a the full iron gauntlet. Um, for now, we can use the titanic smashers again. Because the Colossus is the most powerful troop against low level castles, when you reach more powerful castles, you really want to upgrade your catapult to take down main wall. Actually, let's uh, just do a high arc attack on that. Ah, oh, we missed. Oh, that was costly. Lost a lot of troops there. Let's smash them up good. One more hit should do it. Got some gold for that. So, uh, smash them. Alright, now we can get through. We make our way into the castle where the garrison will be waiting for us. Okay, let's. Um, our powers reset as well. You can see we have two powers we can use there. Uh, we're going to airstrike these guys. Nice. Took out a couple of them. That's only a weak airstrike. Um, they get more powerful as you level them up as well. Let's use our Colossus. Furious attack. <laughs> They're very powerful. What's new in this version also is you now can psych up or hold fast, which adds a plus one attack bonus to all troops for the next round, or a defense bonus if you wish. If you don't have any, you know, you don't use any powers or you don't have any ranged troops as well, you can use those. You can also send the captain to the front if you wish, but if the captain dies, the siege is over, the battle is over. Uh, let's use the power again, Iron Gauntlets. That wasn't super effective. You can see the little blood drops there that actually a few of them in hurt, but that's a pretty weak iron gauntlet spell. Hasn't been leveled up much. So the uh, Sandalphon is taking a few hits there, but he is taking out the cavalry. A fully armed cavalry that's upgraded can take out a Colossus too. Cavalry charge. Furious attack. Oh, lost our cavalry. Hold fast. Colossus attack. Defensive. He foolishly sent out his ranged troops. That was a mistake because now he has none left. And he should have sent out his cavalry. But they are injured, so maybe I don't know what he's holding them for. Who knows what the enemy AI is thinking. I never know. Even though I made the game. I think we got this one. Let's send the captain to the front. A leader. Uh, he's got 100 health as well. So let's... Lionel can fight the, gar uh, the cavalry. It's risky. But we took out one of them. Lost a bit of health. If it gets too risky for him, he can always go back. Colossus, furious attack. Yeah, that's the end of their cavalry. Colossus are very powerful troops. Colossi. And um, that's the end of the battle. A uh, little bug where it doesn't automatically end. you got to press a button, but that should be solved by the release of the game. Always little bugs, aren't they? You have won the battle. All right. Leveled up. Oh. Crusader vanquished. With his stronghold in ruins, Arglax will take no further part in this crusade. He was conquered by King Lionel the Ninth. Congratulations, Crusader. So we've leveled up. You grow more powerful. Great. Um, and that is the end of the campaign. But um, one more turn. Oh, I think it bugged out. Anyway, that's it. And there we go. Um, oh, yeah. Subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you like sword and sandals news and you know trivia and just updates on what i'm doing with the games um i'd love to have you aboard i really love talking to everybody in the comments it really um you know 
it's great feedback for me and it um also just gives me a kind of a real gauge on what you guys think of the games that i'm making because it's uh the quickest way i can kind of you know get feedback on these things and you know fix them and make them how you want them because essentially you know these games are my games but they're also your games you know sword and sound has been around for a long time um it is you know around since 2006 really um and it's kind of it's bigger than me you know so please uh i do appreciate you subscribing to the channel and it's slowly growing even though we're quite small that's it for this video um excuse the bugs um we're gonna have them hopefully ironed out by the launch of the game on september 25th is the launch and you know not everything's going to be fixed by then but there will be patches coming and more content coming in the form of you know as i mentioned earlier the um you know the bargle or sorcerer stuff and um, maybe a couple of extra missions and so on uh please wish list the game I would definitely appreciate um, if you like the game and want to know more about it. Uh, if you wishlist it, Steam sends you an email when it's due. And it also helps um, put it up in the rankings of, you know, popular upcoming games. Until next time, my friends, this beta is uh, about to go live to those intrepid testers. And then I'm going to go dark for a week or two um, as I work on the game. And then I'll be back with a big announcement of, hey, we're ready, and I'll show you more of the final game then. Until next time, um, look after yourselves, and bye for now.